The Gospel for this Christmas Eve, Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Would you please stand? In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. So Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this word which has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Will you join me in prayer? As you make the rain and the snow come down from heaven to water the earth, to make it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, may your word be now that goes from my mouth, O Lord. May it not return to you empty, but accomplish that which you purpose and succeed in the thing for which you send it, to bring faith, peace on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. She had been a member of her congregation for many, many years and she never came up for communion. This was back in the day when they only had communion on the first Sunday of the month. So it was a rare thing when they had it and and she always seemed to be absent, staying home or finding some excuse not to be in church that day. Or if she did show up, she'd always kind of sneak out during communion so she wasn't sitting there awkwardly in the pew while everybody else went up. The pastor, who was fairly new to that congregation, after a while noticed that she was never there. So he went and he talked with her in her home and said, Esther, why don't you ever come up for communion? And she said, you know, it's such a holy thing. I just don't feel worthy. So he shared with her kind of the breakthrough that happened for him because he certainly didn't feel worthy to be a pastor. But then something happened that realized that's what he was being called to. Somebody had shared with him a quote from Martin Luther some years before. Now I'm going to paraphrase it, but Luther had said, it's one thing to believe that Christ died for the likes of Mary, the virgin mother, St. Peter, St. Paul, and the others. But when the heart comes to believe and trust that Christ was sent and died for me, for my sins, and for my salvation, well, then Christ is born again in me and us. If Jesus came not to call the righteous but sinners, which is what he himself says, then it is precisely our unworthiness that qualifies us to come to his table. 
And it is Jesus' worthiness that he graciously gives and bestows on us that qualifies us to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And, and that alone, his righteousness alone. In this very familiar gospel that we hear on Christmas Eve from Luke chapter 2, we hear once again the story of the angels coming to the shepherds as they were watching their flocks by night and sharing, speaking, announcing the gospel, the good news of great joy for, it says, all the people. That this gospel, this good news, is not just for Caiaphas, the high priest, and his family in Jerusalem, but for shepherds out in the fields as well. In fact, for all people. That it isn't just for the good church-going folk like the Levites and the Pharisees and Sadducees. That this gospel is for all people. It isn't just for faithful servants like John the Baptist, the greatest born among women, but for all people born among women. It isn't just for the Jews. It isn't just for the Christians. That God sent his son into the world because God so loves the world, all people, that he gave his only begotten son. John 3.16. Yet the shepherds, they were like Esther. They believed that all people was really most people, and there's always an exception to every rule, and they would be the exception. Because after all, they were men who were well acquainted with the dark, the dark side of life, the underbelly of society. They lived out in the fields dealing with the wolves, and they had had to do some things in life that weren't all that good or godly. So they figure that all of this Jesus stuff, all of this God stuff, all of this uh, love and mercy and forgiveness was for most people, but not for them. So the angels had to figure out how to break through the barriers to pierce the heart, to come and speak a word that would get through to those shepherds and those like them. So they came and they announced, not only is this gospel, this good news for all people, but God has sent us, sent me specifically to you. To you is born in the city of David, the Savior. To you, Christ was born. For you, this is a sign for you that you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Now something happened with those shepherds that night. Something changed them and made them receptive. They did not dismiss or domesticate that message. They didn't trivialize or minimize it. It says they went with haste to see if this word was true, this word of for you. And when they found the promise realized, just as it had been told them, Christ was born again that night in them. And they made known the good news that had been given to them, they shared with others. And one by one, as they shared that good news and it spread from one person to another, it went to the ends of the earth, to all the peoples, just as the angel said. And it went from generation to generation all the way to today in a far off land. In Spokane, Washington on a December night when the Seahawks are playing and the roads are all icy. And the people risked everything to come out and to celebrate and hear once again this good news that isn't just for shepherds, but for you. And lo and behold, doubters were also believers. Sinners were also saints. Shepherds who continued to live and work in the dark were also filled with the light. It's one thing to believe that God would send His Son for the likes of Mary and Peter and Paul and others, but... When the heart comes to receive and believe that Christ died for me, for my sins and my salvation, well, Christ is born again. And lo and behold, God can then even use a man or a woman wrestling with all of their demons to be God's angel, God's messenger. Dress him up in a white robe so he looks more angelic, but that's what not... What, that's not what makes me an angel or you. It's that you've been given this good news and you can't keep it to yourself. It's for me, it's for you, and it's for all people. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, but God wants you to know that this message is for you, has sent me to announce to you 
and said, come to my table and you will hear the direct address from Christ himself. This is my body. This is my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins and for your salvation. I come here tonight not to celebrate the birth of Jesus that happened 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. I come tonight to celebrate the birth of Christ in you. That Christ lives. Christ is born again. Because you are people who have heard his word. I am the good shepherd. You are the sheep of my fold and the lamb of my flock and the sinner of my redeeming. And if there is to be peace on earth, it is because that peace has come to you. A peace which surpasses understanding. Reconciled to God so that you can reconcile to one another. And one by one, share the peace that God has given to you with one other person and that person with another and another and another so that there will be peace on earth. Go and tell all with ears to hear and hearts to receive the good news of what God has done for you. Not just for shepherds out in the fields one night, but for you who have gathered in his house tonight that Christ might be born again. Amen.